Hey there guitar players, it's Anthony here at Cutting Edge Guitar. Welcome back to the channel. So following on from the last lesson that I did uh, the other day for you on connecting scales and things like that along the fretboard, what I want to talk to you about today is connecting up modal scales. So in the last lesson we talked about doing this with the, uh, the humble minor pentatonic scale. And when I say humble, there's obviously nothing wrong with the minor pentatonic scale. The reason why it gets used so much by all guitar players is because it sounds great and it's easy to execute. So what's not to like? Uh, but of course, there are going to be certain players amongst you that will want to expand on the harmony and do a little bit more uh, than what you get with the minor pentatonic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick to the same backing track that I used in the last session but what we're going to be looking at now is playing a dorian modal uh, scale and we're looking at a dorian pattern that we can use uh, to sort of cover a, a large area of the guitar neck because it's all about the question here that i'm being asked is how do you connect up the fretboard so let's have a listen to the backing track that we're going to be playing this over. And let's have a quick listen to this idea being played against the backing track up to speed. So, let's break this down for you and talk about what's going on here. So, when you want to connect up large areas of the guitar neck. There's a few different ways that you can do this. One thing is that you can play along the length of a single string. So it's a really good way to learn your scales is to be like, right, can I play, let's say like that backing track that I've got there is an A minor seven funky backing track. It's just on YouTube, just somewhere that I've, just a backing track that I found that I liked. And what you want to be able to do to play along a single string is, let's say, for example, if I'm just playing on the high E string, I want to be able to go, can I play A Dorian? Just along the length of that string, because once you can do that, obviously, as you can see, I'm doing that with one finger. Like I can now play the scale, but that's obviously just being able to play the scale and not playing any vocabulary. So one of the things about playing along the length of a string is that you go, well, how you visualize it. Some players out there can actually see the pattern of tones and semitones and stuff. One of the, How I've always visualized it, what made sense to me, is if I just go like this, I want to go, right, this sh three notes per string fingering shape that I have here is the top part of this entire full shape of a Dorian. Now when I move it to the next shape, this is this the shape that I've got here in my fretting hand. This is the top part of Oops. Um, that's the, the top part of that overall shape. Then moving up a fretboard position, I've got this shape, which is the top part of etc etc so all i do is that i visualize it in chunks going i've got this then i've got this then i've got this 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 etc etc so whatever way you visualize it you can't like this it doesn't matter about you know what's the right way to do it the wrong way to do it it's whatever works for you that's obviously always worked for me and then because i like to play sort of technical styles of music when i'm playing you know faster ideas or whatever you've got all these different patterns that you can insert well that's one of my favorite ones that's uh, it's actually an ingve pattern but it works quite nicely on something like this I would say, especially if you do it with like a legato approach. Come out like this, two, three, four. Uh, but there's also some people, you know, like not every guitar player wants to play shreddy type pans. You might want to do something like, you know, this. something a bit more melodic whatever but that's again like is just being let's just being played along the length of a single string another way to do these things is to play over two strings which is what we're going to look at in a sec with the tab we've got all sorts of patterns that you can do over that but then you can do you know so you just so basic like this can i play that 
them sorts of ideas. What have the, you then got that you can do over three strings? You know, start moving these around. You could go, what have I got for four strings? What have I got for five strings? You know, you can make this, you can really extend this out. But then, of course, you can go, what have I got on just the one string, which is my high E string, but then what have I got I can do on my B string, and you know, whatever. There's loads and loads and loads that you could keep doing with this. You could just keep going forever. So let's get into something that's really tangible that you can actually play. Now, this is something that I really, really like to do, and lots of my favorite players like to do this as well, which is effectively where you're playing up in one position. So if you look at what I've got in the tab here, we're going 7, 8, 10, 7, 8, 10 on your B and high E string. So I'm ascending a portion of A Dorian here. Then I'm going to immediately slide into the 12th fret here and then do pull offs down. So 12, 10, 8, 12, 10, 8. So that will be. So I've now got. Okay, and then what you'll do is you just keep that pattern moving uh, throughout the, the shapes of the scale. So you've got, I'm going up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Now all I've just put in the tab on this particular example, just coming off to an A note. So if we just play it like that, uh, just as a, a, an exercise or as an idea. So the thing with this now, you've got effectively like a run that you can use. But what you what you do to turn this into something that becomes musical, a bit like I talked about in the last lesson, is you need some sort of phrasy kind of idea that sets you up to go into your run, and then when you finish your run, you want some sort of phrasy, melodic thing that comes out of it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna put the backing track on, improvise it a couple of times so you can see what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna start down here, go into the run, and then exit. concept that I call linear motion. Depends on who you are studying from uh, or who you're talking to. The concepts are all basically the same. Some people call this lateral motion, horizontal motion, whatever. I think that I took the terminology of linear motion from uh, Mick Goodrick. I can't remember if that is where I got it from though, but someone will probably let us know in the comments who said that that termed coined the term linear motion but I always think about it like this so when you're playing the guitar you can play in a line or across a position or what you can do is you can combine entire shapes and play and just kind of go wherever you want which I know Mick Goodrick did call that the realm of the electric ice skating rink where you can go wherever you want but anyway that is uh, another session for you on how to connect up scales and positions and things like that. If you want to know more, as always, do go and check out the Cutting Edge Guitar website where I have tons and tons and tons more tutorials about all of that sort of thing. And also as well, if buying just say like an online course or following a book series or those sorts of things aren't for you, you want to get direct access to a teacher, you want to be able to talk to other students, uh, take live lessons and all of that sort of thing, then you can consider becoming a member of the Cutting Edge Guitar Mastery Club where you get exclusive access to me as your teacher. 
Okay guys, thanks ever so much for watching. Do uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more lessons like this. Uh, drop me a line in the comments if you've got anything that you'd like me to create content about going forward and I will hopefully see you in another video sometime soon. Take care.